Today's horror comic dub and narration is Wardrobe of Monsters from the Creepy Archives. If you enjoy the story at any point in time, please do not hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me a lot. Anyways, without further ado, let's get right into this chilling tale. Gentlemen, we are ready to unseal this unusual extra sarcophagi. It is the one we brought back. Found along with Ankumam's mummy. But sir, will this bring a, a, a curse upon us? I've heard of such things before. Oh, Poppycock. The dead have no power over the living. Open it, Baxter. Good lord. A winged corpse like a vampire. Amazing. What will the other caskets hold? Help me open them, please, Murchison. As three more lids creak open, the macabre mystery multiplies. A beast man, or perhaps a wolf man, and a satanic devil man, and a misshapen, unhuman patchwork like Frankenstein. What do we make of it or do of it, Reichman? Puh. Artificial forms, Perletti. Even if they feel like cold flesh and blood. Androids. Bio-robots. Synthetic creatures. Whatever you will. Invented by the Pharaoh as his traditional death companions. That's all. These hieroglyphics, what do they say, Baxter? It is slow work deciphering these inscriptions. They're both worn and faded. Give me another week, gentlemen. You're the expert, Baxter. We'll withhold announcing the major dynastic find until then. Fame for all of us and fortune. The archaeological bonanza of the century. I'll work nights and hurry up my deciphering, gentlemen. Night after night, Arnold Baxter laboriously pieces out the hoary messages, starting with the pharaohs. Wardrobe of bodies? Huh? Good heavens. Does it mean his astral spirit is supposed to be put in those bodies? Almost like wearing clothing? Translating from one of the other sarcophagi should give us the answer. An eerie answer indeed. To inhabit first form. Touch magic amulet. Pronounce the charm. Exotzil. Balderdash, of course. A pharaoh's mad dream of escaping from his dreaded dead mummy and living a new life by donning his wardrobe of waiting bodies. I'll try the mumble jumble for myself for laughs. Exotzil! Startled, Baxter feels strange forces wrenching him, turning him inside out, tearing him asunder, and then... My, my, my body! It's lying there. Yet, I seem to be detached wafting into the sarcophagus toward that monstrous form. It can't... it can't be. But then the eyes of the creature slowly opened. Uh, 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 I'm... I'm wearing the vampire's body. No, no. It must just be my mind, my mentality, trapped within this loathsome form. I want to get out. Please. I need help. Instantly, at his wish's command, thank heaven. It, it seems I can enter or leave the vampire form at will. It is like putting on and taking off a suit of clothes. Hmm. No one knows of this. Not even my colleagues. 
Other thoughts arise as Arnold Baxter's detached psyche again dons the evil form in the sarcophagus. Why share the world-wide acclaim in awards? Those to come for the discovery of Ankh Umem's sarcophagi. And why split up the pharaoh's treasures five ways when I can reduce the number one by one? Who can trace the murder trail of a vampire back to me? <laughs> Henry Murchison first. He'll pass from a temporary sleep into eternal repose. Silent, bat-like wings carry the monstrous killer back to the museum and... Number one, out of the way. And nobody the wiser that I, Arnold Baxter, did it. Perfect. Perfect. The next day, it will go into the unsolved cases, rounding up homicide suspects. The police never include vampires. <laughs> But just to make this series of crimes more baffling, I'll use all of the monster's forms. And that night, now to use the second specimen in the wardrobe of bodies, Zoxil! Now, wearing the wolfman's form, I'll go after Parletti. In another part of the city, <laughs> Hello, Parletti, and goodbye. Traveling unseen back to the museum. Two down, two to go. Ha 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 ha! Baxter had a caller the next day. Timothy Todd. Huh? What? First Murchison, then Parletti. Which of us will be next? The next victim of the Pharaoh's retribution. It must be that. Baxter, is there any mention of a curse upon those who defile Ankh Umem's tomb? Not a word, Todd. Supernatural rot. With his weak heart, Murchison probably had a stroke. And perhaps... A wild dog attacked Parletti. I... I, I, I don't know. It's still more than a sheer coincidence that two of our colleagues should die all of a sudden. And another death. Ugh. If not my own, and I go to the police. You just appointed yourself number three, Todd. Tonight. As midnight told, they say it is not moral aversion but only risk of being caught that deters men from crime. That, without fear of a punishment, any man will commit murder to benefit himself. And why not? Yes, why not? I, Arnold Baxter, stand to gain glory and gold with no fear of retribution from the law. <laughs> Muttering aloud fearfully, Timothy Todd has shunned bedtime in his secluded suburban home. I'll, I'll be on guard all night. Doors, windows, everything bolted shut. Nothing or no thing can come upon me by surprise. You forgot the chimney, Todd. Ugh! That thing in the flames! The Pharaoh's Devil Man! If flames failed to stop me, do you think that bullets would? Yes, Todd. It's a curse, alright. The Baxter Curse! Ha 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 ha! After Baxter re-inhabits his own body at the museum, 
Hmm. There is only one other possibility of interference in my plans. The Pharaoh's astral spirit. If it still lingers within his long dead corpse. But I'll fix that. Fuming acid for cleaning ancient relics pours in. That finishes Pharaoh Ankamum's mummy. Astral spirit and all. His wardrobe of monsters is mine now. All mine. Baxter? Eric Reichman here. One death. Even two death I could take. But three of us. Shocking and ominous. Only you and I left now, Baxter. I'm coming to talk this frightening business over with you. This evening. I'll be waiting for you, Reichman. In ambush. <laughs> Out of the night shadows as Reichman arrives. What are you saying, Reichman? Take my share of the Pharaoh's loot? How kind of you. <laughs> Later, in the storeroom. But, but, where is my body? It's gone. Hearken, Arnold Baxter. When you destroyed my mummy, you awoke my slumbering astral spirit. The dead pharaoh's voice? No. Wait. Oh lord, now I know. It's my own voice. From my body. Your body, Baxter. It now belongs to me. Pharaoh Ankamum. And in return, you may have my wardrobe of monster forms forever. <laughs> Hey everyone, thank you so so much for watching, i like to give a major and special thanks to my Patreons, I couldn't do it without them. So thank you very very much, James Abel, Banger Prophecy, and Motosurf. I appreciate you all so much for your kind donation, and for supporting the channel, but I'd also like to take the time to thank each and every one of you who always takes the time to comment on the video, like the video, and most importantly, watch the video. A storyteller is nothing without someone who is willing to listen, so I appreciate each and every one of you. If you enjoy this format, don't forget to let me know in the comments below or suggest other stories that you'd like to hear. Thank you very much for listening, and remember, you are important, and you matter. Have a good night everyone. Goodbye.